Africa TV, Free Cup Studio, Live, 2020, GSL Super Tournament, Season 2. Welcome back to the GSL Super Tournament, number 2. For 2020, I am Artosis, joined by Tasteless. How are you doing today, Nick? Pretty uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Highlander, so Gemini uh, cut off Tasteless's head, and here he is. He's casting with me here today. Um, yeah, so Tasteless, basically, he's busy, guys, and the wonderful GGE Mini 19 himself has agreed to come in and cast some GSL today. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. This is going to be super fun. Uh, first time casting GSL, of course, is going to be, I know, a dream basically for me this is absolutely incredible never would have thought i could be here doing this right now so this is awesome i'm super hyped we got some awesome games we got some awesome players this is going to be super sick yeah yeah the stars aligned well most of the way trap played on wednesday yeah. unfortunately i know that you would have really preferred that but we do have stats playing tonight in the first match it looks like it could be a good one yeah uh pretty much the tide for the first or second place player of protoss basically trap and stats are really basically the the two neck and neck right now mm -hmm. um so if I can't have trap stats, probably the next best one. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll always take some stats casting, no doubt about that. Some other great players here uh, today as well. Of course, Rogue and Maru being two of the big ones, two of the best players in the entire world. Uh, of course, if you are just joining us and you're like, wait a minute, what's this? This isn't GSL Code S. Yeah, it's Super Tournament, man. We have four best of fives today. It's going to be a long day. There's going to be a lot of great games. And we will be finishing this tournament right up next week. Uh, as you can see, our Wednesday night bracket was an insane one. Three three to twos and then SOS going DTs against Zest multiple times and just getting free wins. It was a, an amazing night. Really, that that was there was a lot of great stories in there too. Like Dark vs. Beyond, Beyond's wrists fell oh, apart yeah. and he just he went from 2-0 to 0-3. Uh, and then of course Trap had some keyboard issues but still was able to overcome Solar. And then you look at tonight's uh, matchup, right? We have Stats vs. Dream, Innovation vs. Armani, Rogue vs. Bunny, and Maru vs. Cure. Any match in particular you're looking forward to? Obviously the Stats Dream, as I am a Protoss player myself, so I, uh, I feel like I will connect to that one the most, of course. Mm -hmm. um, the Maru vs. Cure game is also going to be absolutely insane, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. Maru's TVT is extremely enjoyable to watch. Yeah. He's probably my... He's always been my favorite Terran player. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to be doing pretty well here. Uh, recently beating Cure in the King of Battles finals as well mm. uh, in October. So I think he'll be in a pretty good spot to do that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that match as well, to be honest. Uh, now, up to our first match, it is going to be Stats against Dream. Of course, Stats has had a pretty good year. He, he took a little bit of a dip after that year where he basically battled Serral in the finals of everything uh, and was certainly the number one Protoss in the world there. Uh, but Finally, he came back this year, and you can see he got second place in Season 2, top four in Season 3. And honestly, he looks amazing right now. His PVT, I would say, especially looks good. Yeah, his PVT has been pretty good. He had a bit of that little dip during last season or the season before versus TY uh, uh, yeah. in, the round of, in the round of 8 or round of 4. But otherwise, his PVT has been really, really solid. Uh, the other player, though, that we have, Dream, who has been kind of coming up pretty steadily after coming back from the military about a year and a half ago, a year, uh, two years ago or so. He's been doing some pretty good stuff on online tournaments. He's had not the greatest GSL so far this year. He did have a round of eight in season two, which is quite strong. But whether or not he can actually use that to kill stats here in Super Tournament, mm. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, well, it, Dream definitely is coming back very strong from the military. One of the stronger players uh, coming back overall. And I gotta say, the matchup of his that has most impressed me would be his TVP. 
in my opinion. Like, for, I've watched a ton of Dream Games, and he has his own little style, his own flair in Terran vs. Protoss, and I think he brings something a little bit special to the matchup, so I'm excited to see what he can do against stats. Yeah, he definitely focuses a lot on drop-heavy play. He's got a bunch of these super YOLO mass <laughs> drops uh, in the mid-game, like four, you know, three, four, five medevacs. Really reminds me of Cure, honestly, from, like, five or so years ago, back in, like, uh, part of the Swarm. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, yeah. He just goes absolutely ham with these mm. huge Doom drops in sure. the mid-game, and it can totally cripple him, uh, cripple his Protoss opponents. He actually played against Stats recently, two matches in the last, like, two weeks or so in an Holy Moly League and uh, one other place, mm. and one of the ways that he did take down Stats was with one of those big Doom drops in the main on Pillars of Gold. Which stats feed to this <laughs> Well, there you go. Perfect. Makes sense. It's a bit more spread than some of these other maps. Uh, well, map one going to be submarine. A little bit of a surprise there. Let's get into it. Now. Game Boom. start. Afrika Freaks. Stats. Dream. All right. Dream, unfortunately, no longer having a team right now. Some rough times for some of the players because of that. Uh, of course, he was killing in that team league, the Chinese team league. Oh, my God. He was like the MVP of the whole league. <laughs> yeah, he was doing really good. Um, unfortunately, Bravestar did have to disband, so it's a little bit unfortunate on his end. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully, he'll be able to find a new team soon enough. I'm sure he's pretty good, obviously. One of the best Korean yeah. Terrans we have over here, so I, I don't think he'll have too much of a problem. Uh, I think, so, what didn't Special in the Pylon show mention that, or maybe it was a, a tweet or something that there was someone that was going to try to rally out the, the Brave Star guys? Oh no, I saw a tweet about it. Someone oh, else tweeted okay. about it saying that uh, Dream, Cyan, and some uh, Patience, maybe? Maybe it was another person. Okay. They were going to get rallied together by some other team oh, and that'd get, be cool get to put see. together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know what? I think that Dream is like smart money for the future uh, because basically we have a lot of top players that are going to the military. And honestly, Dream has already shown that he's almost to the level to, the, to compete with everyone. Uh, even his round of eight this year in season two, like he lost because he was against Rogue who smashed the whole tournament, right? Yeah. So like you can't fault someone for losing to the champion in the round of eight. That, that could have been a round of four performance from him to be perfectly honest. Uh, and the thing is, I've, I've been sold on Dream for a long time now, for, for a year and a half almost, since he's really been back and playing. He's done so many of the online tournaments. He's taken down just about everyone. He's got a great style. He, you know, he knows how to keep the pressure on against Protoss. Uh, but the one thing that makes me a little bit nervous here, that's almost what Stats wants, is he wants you to attack. He wants you to try to do big drops against him because his defensive play is just so strong. Absolutely. And we can kind of see that here as well. He's going for the battery in the main and then going across with the adept this is something he's been doing almost every pvt that i've seen him in the last couple weeks actually including versus dream and those other two series that i mentioned he always goes for this battery in the mineral line so that way he can send the adept across without having to rely on probe micro back home mm -hmm. versus the reaper so it's a easy way to do that dream i think realizes and understands that stats has been doing this a lot doesn't even send the reaper across yeah, so he's yeah. just going to be defending entirely versus adept and so this isn't really going to do too much. It doesn't really ever do that much. It might mm -hmm. delay the mining behind the CC for a little bit when the second Adept finally does come in. But uh, Dream kind of doing a little bit of a mind game there to mm -hmm. force stats to, to waste those 100 minerals in the early game. Yeah, you know, I love moves like that, to be honest. These little metagame shifts that happen from two players that have actually prepped for each other, right? Like the fact that he's kept this at home, he has the bunker ready. Like, what are you going to do? You going to finish that? Yes. Well, I guess you're going to finish it, and you're going to get the, uh, <laughs> you're going to immediately get the Reaper. Yeah, this is something that's pretty uh, pretty common whenever I see, like, Stats or Trap or any of the other, these other super high-tier Protoss players do these PBT openers. They love to just sit behind the Mineral Line, try to deny as many SCVs from mining as possible in the early game. And you can even get these little shaves, shave offs here, getting the Hellion, perhaps, getting a Marine or two. Might even actually get that Ooh. Hellion very close, very close. Leaves the Adept to queue in with the third one as well. 
And what this does basically just kind of puts the pressure off of stats, right? Mm -hmm. He's going Stargate behind this. He's going to go for the Robo follow up too, so he's going to be going for his Phoenix Colossus style. But what this does is make it so that, again, he doesn't feel any pressure while going for this. He is full range, he knows exactly what's going on, and he'll be able to then go in with the Phoenix afterwards to confirm a full scout on the Terran main. Yeah, it, I love this style for stats, to be honest. Uh, I don't love it for everyone because it can be a little bit tricky to play. You really have to take your positioning very, very seriously. You have to be very careful with when and how you're taking that third base as well. But this type of Phoenix Colossus opening that stats is showing us here is just like his bread and butter, you know? It, it, it's going to allow him to stay alive. It's going to allow him to stop any sort of harassment that's coming out. But we're going to have to see if Dream actually goes for it because you can already tell right like you said he kept the reaper at home you can tell he's done his homework so he's gonna know that stats likes this type of play and we'll see like if he over commits on the map against his phoenixes yeah and surprisingly enough actually that could still go towards his favor in trying to break someone apart when they go phoenix because the, the thing with phoenix is that when you open for them, you have this sense of security with it, right? They're always going to be able to defend drops. You always can rely on them to do so. Mm -hmm. Stats now going into the main base, beginning a little poke, sees that it is a Cyclone Viking follow-up, so he knows he's, he's really not in any threat mm -hmm. to get attacked at this moment. So he can be very mo much more aggressive with these Phoenix, trying to pick off whatever he can. Dream's doing a really good job of actually yeah. preventing this entirely. He, but he's beautifully positioned, zoning them out. Absolutely. And since the person going Phoenix will feel very confident with their Phoenix, they might completely ignore the fact that drops could come in anyway, and then they'll fly in from a different angle, because the Phoenix will have to stay clumped where they are, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just spread, spread sure, like three sure. Phoenix some way to the other. Mm -hmm. If they're not all positioned, they will not be able to kill something. So these massive big Doom drops that Deer, or, uh, Dream does love going for mm. in the mid game still can find uh, find avenues to get damage done. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is a possibility there. Uh, personally, I feel like the way to play against Phoenixes is to hit your critical mass, right? Phoenixes mm. are so fantastic in the early game, in the early mid game, but there's always a critical mass that comes up where suddenly the Phoenixes don't do nearly as much in a battle, right? They go and they try to pick up a tank or something, but you have so many Marines, you just shoot them out of the sky. And uh, I feel like that's what I want to see out of Dream here. And the thing is, as much as I love stats, I'm kind of like rooting on Team Dream because if this is going to be one-sided, it's going to be a stats victory, and I want a nice long series to start us out here. Yeah, for sure. The I, I, I'm feeling the same thing as well. Uh, interestingly enough, I feel like how many Phoenixes stats actually have right now? Two, four, He's six, eight, seven. I think. I think it's eight or seven. He's going to go into the main base, get a lot of good pickups here. Not even going to lose a single Phoenix for all of this. Mm, perfect, really nice. Perfectly done. Realizing where those units were. Not even getting one on the retreat there either. Very nicely done by stats to get those nice, easy pickoffs. Yeah, look at that. Very, very well done. Now, there are Marauders being popped out. There are tanks still being made. Uh, and, you know, the Phoenix energy is, like, lower now. I guess that's something that we can say. But I'm looking at this army that is being made by Dream, and I don't think he actually has an attack here to be honest. Like, he's moving out, and it's submarines, so siege tanks are very good. <laughs> um, but, like, it, is this army actually big enough right now? He has, like, two Phoenixes. It's almost... I'd almost rather not have any... I mean, uh, two Vikings. I'd almost rather not have any against this many Phoenixes. Yeah, they're, they're going to be almost useless in this fight, it feels like, unless mm. stats completely misfires. Oh, oh my god. Wow. I thought, actually, he might hop on that because his yeah. mortal was leading right there, but uh, does back up. You really just want to play it super patient with these because you know that they're super committed on two base. For now, the third base is mega late from Dream. So you having the third base already set up and already having your transition for charge and plus one, you know that you're going to be in a good spot to defend this as long as you just delay as possible. You just want to get as many units out as you can. You really want to pick it where you really can get the best fight possible. Mm -hmm. I got to say, this is very precise control here on both sides. These He's not letting even a volley of the Phoenixes hit his Vikings. He's keeping them exactly out of range. Superbly done. Now, here we go. The Phoenixes are going to come in and dive on top of those Vikings, lifting up the Sea Chanks as well. He's trying to target down the Phoenixes as quickly as he can. A nice stim there, but it really looks like Stats is going to plow through everything. Really nicely done. He was super patient to wait for charge to finish. Without charge finishing for this fight, this must have this might have looked extremely different actually. Even with that little tight corner with the tanks sieged up on the cliff right there, 
stats, had all the Phoenix there. The, again, the Vikings were not in high enough number to actually negate them, and so it, it was just free reign. The, the tanks were not doing anything the whole fight, and now stats can very easily snowball this ahead. And I don't think Dream has anything here to No, this. and he doesn't really have a chance anymore. I mean, it, just the, the Phoenix play alone is going to crush through him. So that was that was kind of like what I was talking about, where it didn't feel like he had enough units to move out. That wasn't the critical mass that you need to make the Phoenixes useless. Yeah. But you were right, right? His third base, it was it was a bit late there. It, maybe he felt pressured, like he needed to move out. I feel like he almost just played like the map and not the game. You know what I mean? I was going to say the exact same thing. It seemed like he had a plan going into this game. He knew, okay, this is the build I'm going to do. I want to do it. This is the push. It's really good. I've won many ladder points with it. Boom, let's do it. Submarine, it's a great It's a great map for a build like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the units got picked off in the main base, too. That would have been a nice addition to have in there. Any any units, of course, is obviously is better in that fight. But uh, it, it really did kind of feel like he was just kind of going with the build. The, the early game went very well for him. Like, let's be real. The, the Phoenix barely did much. So, I mean, let's see what happens in game two. All right, here we go. Light shade for game, game number two. Start. Afrika Freaks. Stats. Dream. All right. So stats, of course, leading one to zero. Uh, hopefully we can see maybe Slightly better decision making, I guess, from Dream, because I I think his zoning was great, as you pointed out again there. I think that his micro was fantastic. Like just watching the way he utilized. Like the thing is, if you don't have a critical mass of, I'm using this critical mass term a lot, but this is a very important concept when you're playing against Phoenixes specifically in TVP. Uh, if you don't have the critical mass of Vikings generally to be able to kill all the Phoenixes and the Colossi, or to suicide them on the Colossi and get the Colossi before the, before the Phoenixes can kill your Vikings, if you don't have that, generally it's better to just not have any. Yeah. Like, you don't... Like, what's worse than one Muta in your army? Right? It's it's garbage. It's nothing. And that... It could have looked like that, but his micro was very good. He continued to reinforce. So I feel like Dream is playing well. It's just basically like we were talking about, right? It's like, okay, this is a great build for the map in this exact situation. Is this a good move? It didn't feel like it. Yeah. And I think if we had seen that same exact defense on a different map, we would have had a much different game because a lot of times on the slightly bigger maps, Dream has been going for a lot of fast third CCs. Mm. In general, a lot of Terran play has kind of seen that recently versus Protoss. They get relatively faster third CCs than we've seen in the last couple months. And with the strong defense that he had in the early game versus those Phoenix, had he been going for a 3cc build, I think he would have been in a much better spot to then propel that more into the mid game and, and yeah. play that more yeah, yeah. mass uh, mass unit style that, you, that you're talking about. Yeah, and well, I think that that's always an alright choice as well against Phoenixes, right? Phoenixes want to battle at small supplies. That's mm -hmm. just, that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, these, it, basically you know, this is a concept that I talk about so much in GSL cast and StarCraft 2 cast because it comes up so much. Uh, it's the, the concept of scaling, right? Like, adepts want to fight earlier in the game. You don't want maxed armies with adepts in them. Uh, same with roaches, right? Like, roaches are great early on. Yeah, he comes and sees that same shield better again. He barely uh, missed the Stargate. It was like a pixel off. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it, this type of this type of idea is such, it's such an important one, such a valuable one to, to follow. Step yeah. comes in here. I don't think he'll be able to see exactly what's in the main base because the Reaper is coming back to two. Ooh, perfect little shade out. I like it. I like it. I mean, I'm kind of curious that Stats is going for a Stargate again, actually. Do you think it'll be Phoenix? I Yes, I think it's going to be the exact same thing, mm -hmm. which kind of does lend more towards stats. You know, he's a very, if it, if it's not broke, don't fix it player. <laughs> he you know? is, you're right. He, you're he, right. He, will, he will bring out the same thing every time mm -hmm. in a series if it works well. And yeah, there's the Phoenix this time. However, the, the interesting thing that I find from this is that the I keep I keep bringing up these last couple series since they literally happened like within the last week. Yeah, like, yeah. They literally just played each other. Uh, Stats was going for a lot of blink openers versus Dream. Mm. He he mixed in like a Stargate once per mm. series basically, but he was predominantly going blink. Whereas this game, it's, it seems like it's almost going to be the opposite, where he's predominantly going Stargate. Maybe gets a, a blink in there somewhere or whatever, and then boom, the Reaper gets killed by those three adepts. 
Will he be able to shade through? I, ooh, he might do that. That's uh, that's a bit of a debate. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm amazed that that mine did not get off. I know, right? It really felt like he was going to get a hit there. But uh, some nice micro here from Stats. Does have oh. that shade about to finish. I'm sure he'll let it. Oh, my uh, I think he lost lose? one there just at the end. Yeah. Nice. All right, but, I mean, some really solid harassment overall. Look at that. Peels off three Marines and the Reaper. I'm going to go ahead and retreat with these couple of them. Uh, now... We do have uh, Phoenixes on the way. The Robotech coming up. It looks like the exact same build. Dream having a little bit of a hiccup there. We see the rally being blocked by his uh, raised depot. I'm trying to think. Yeah, there. Okay, there we go. There's that third CC. All right, let's see exactly what happens this time because we're playing exactly the same situation where Stats is going for Phoenix into Colossus. Yes. And then, just like I was saying, if Dream had gone for 3CC, I feel like it would have been a much different game that we saw. So yeah. he's going for the Viking as well, because that's, this is just the kind of the, the standard defensive setup you have as Terran early game. Uh, I don't think he went for a Cyclone this time, so it's a slightly different. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, r I do want to see what happens with this fast third CC and how this game actually progresses. Yeah, this is it's actually really exciting to see because, well, we don't know what his plans were coming in, right? right. I feel like we actually do know what stats his plans were <laughs> coming in so far. Uh, and it, it felt like game one was, was definitely a map plan for Dream. But here, like maybe he was already going to do this, but mm -hmm. this fits the situation better than the previous game. There's just not even a question about that. Yeah, I would agree 100%. It's it's just like, yeah, I mean, if you see Phoenix is just... It, do you remember when it was Phoenix versus Phoenix in PvP? Oh, yeah. Remember that you would just make Nexuses? Yes. And you know what happens when you go Phoenix harassment against Zerg? You make a hatchery. Yes. <laughs> and the same thing applies here. It's just the Phoenixes can't kill buildings, so you may as well just expand your, your supply. Yeah, I was even going to mention it before that, yeah, whenever I'm playing versus Phoenix, even non-Phoenix, like not, not Phoenix versus Phoenix, whenever I'm playing against Phoenix in PvP, the, the thing that you want to do is just expand it to your third as fast as possible yeah. and just spam out probes because they can't do anything otherwise. This is a bit of an overextension. I would say he gets three SCVs for that, but I think he lost a Phoenix or two. He gets he loses one. Did get a mine with that, it looks like, too. So actually, I think it was worth. Yeah, not that bad. It was worth. And uh, honestly, this is something that you would want to do in this type of situation. Did he see the third command? I don't I, know. He, he flew far enough in that there looked like things were, were missing, so he might have a good idea of it. But, like, let's say that he knows that there's a third command. This You would want to dive a little bit more because you don't need these on the defense. Yeah. You know? It's just, like, even if you lose one or two, Dream cannot move out. Yeah. I don't think he knows about the third CC yet, because if he did, I, I would imagine the second forge being going down right now. Uh, yeah, a you, a lot he of started the second forge. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that it's is the done. second forge. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't see the plus one. Then. All, right, all right, yeah, so I think he does know. Yeah, he should be fully aware. Ooh, he can get some Marines here. Does he not get them picked up into the medevac quite in time? Yes. Oh, might even get the medevac. Oh, man. That would have been cool. <laughs> whenever I see those, like, tiny little, like, pickoffs, I love those. It's so it's so, it's so so cr uh, crisp whenever they can do their Phoenix control that well. Mm -hmm. Well, he's doing some good harassment overall. He definitely got to hand him that. Uh, Dream over here, he is macroing well. He's getting his upgrades. Everything seems to be going pretty much according to plan. What do you think about the distinct lack of missile turrets? I guess he's now getting them. Maybe he just wanted to power up into his production before spending on turrets. But, what? yeah, what do you what do you think about that? I almost feel like maybe he could have gotten them earlier when you start counting how much he's actually lost in the price of that. Yeah, I think... I feel like he was kind of taking not the worst losses ever. Like, th like these are not the hugest trades that yeah. we've seen so far. I feel like he might have just send, said, like, all right, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. uh, this is this is going well enough that I don't feel like I need to sink a million turrets into this right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't have, uh, I don't know exactly to be honest. We have we have the the Ghost Academy coming up now too, pretty quickly, which is. I, I'm curious what you think about that because we're going into Colossus <laughs> in the mid game. I know, I know, EMP is good. I know the new yeah, Shockwave yeah, upgrade is, okay. is still pretty strong, and 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 Terrans do like it a lot. Yeah. However, uh, he is, I mean, he is continuing Viking production as well. So I guess, I guess it's it's totally fine. But no, I, you know, I think it's I think it's solid actually. Uh, and the thing is, it's also stylistic. Dream always goes ghost. Like he just he really does like to get ghosts out relatively early in this matchup. Uh, but don't forget, it works very well against the clump of Phoenixes as well, yeah, right? Sure. You get rid of all their lift power, so now your tanks are safe, mm -hmm. uh, and they're just going to die a, a lot quicker now with that EMP. So Absolutely. no, I think it's I think it's pretty solid, even though you don't think of it as a good first counter against Colossus. Yeah, 
Something else that I did also just remember is that I saw Stats doing a really big Archon transition, actually. Mm. With this composition, he gets yeah. a ton of Archons. Yeah, and he and, is doing that. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it definitely, you know, EMP is absolutely wonderful against Archons, considering they're literally all shields. So I'm sure <laughs> that that is possibly in his mind as well. Uh, he's really trying to posture in the middle of the map here. He's trying to find a good spot to, to siege up his tanks and get into a good foothold here because, uh, interestingly enough, I actually just saw them play this exact map in this same situation where Dream was trying to push down into that third, fourth base location and Stat just had the most gargantuan arc. Yeah. And he just funneled in and it was not even close. He's he's setting it up. Like, you can see Stats getting this, this nice line of units ready for the engagement. And that is scary. I, I love Stats' play overall here strategically. But look at this. Dream maneuvering around. He needs to hit these EMPs. These are going to be very important. Okay, a very good EMP goes out. Another one hits some of the Phoenixes there. Still a lot of health on those Archons. They are really helping to tank right through this. The Vikings trying to target things down, but not really helping in this army. A lot of Marauders left over, and he actually forces Stats back for now. Yeah, there wasn't enough charge lots after the fact. They all kind of funneled in right at the beginning. There was no flank or anything like that. So a lot of the bio actually stood pretty strong there. Mm -hmm. And he did able to push him back a little bit. Dream doesn't feel overly confident to really try to break it home because he really doesn't have any answer to the Colossus yeah. because a lot of the Vikings did die to those Phoenix. So he definitely does. I don't, I don't think he should be trying to push him mega, mega hard right now. I think that's a, a good trade you can take and then kind of just extrapolate it onto later into the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I pretty much agree with you on that. I think he does need a bit of reinforcements to be able to engage again. I do like how marauder heavy his army is right now. That's definitely going to help in the future. Has a couple tanks in here. Actually catches Ooh. the DTs as they walk across. That's a big moment for a lot of reasons like knowing that your opponent is now thinking about harassing you with DTs. Yeah, and it's always the worst feeling in the world when you send them all out, you shift click them all like, okay, you go to the space, you go to the base safe. Yeah, hell right, we're going to kill the Terran's economy. And then they all die to one scan in the middle of the map. You're just like, oh, of course you're sitting right there. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, Turn. why are you there? <laughs> why is he there? I, I totally know that feeling. But look at this, a DT is going to wiggle his way past. He's going to go right up into the main base. Doesn't even care. His bullets start to hit his shields. <laughs> And, oh, that's going to be annoying. Look at how annoying that is. But hold on. Ooh. Stats actually starting to attack here. I don't know if this is the best attack, but it seems like he may have caught him off guard slightly. Big kiting going on right now from Dream as he goes back. Stats with still a very strong army. More EMPs going off and another group of Zods coming up. But it seems like Dream has enough. This is going to be really close. There is the upgrade advantage for Stats. He's got 2-2 two, two over 1-1. One, one. And with the War Prism here to continue reinforcing, I think he can really pile this home. That DT was definitely distracting in the main base while this is happening. Really good by Stats to capitalize on that and go for a double-pronged attack. The DT's still oh, there. Oh, brutal. It's still there. And we got more Warpins coming in onto the natural of Dream. And th this his supply is just absolutely yeah. in the dumpster. GG Stats wow. coming up with a quick... 2-0. I wish we had seen the very first seconds of that engagement because you're right, there was like the DT going into the main base which which brought his attention away I think because it, it seems to me like Dream should have been able to hold that a little bit better. Uh, but it, it seems like a lot of damage was done like instantaneously on it. I think Stats caught him off guard with that attack which makes that a brilliant tactical play. Yeah, it's, it's the best feeling in the world after losing all your DTs in the middle of the map, to then just get that one tiny one to sneak by yeah. and then couple it with the main <laughs> army attacking at the same time. They can't look, they literally cannot look at both places at once. You're gonna get damaged somewhere. And that yeah. is exactly what happened at the end of that fight. Beautifully done from Stats. Uh, you know, I, I think that Dream is playing some pretty good StarCraft, but Stats definitely a top two Protoss in the world right now. So yeah. maybe even top one. Um, I won't take that bait. <laughs> All right, we're going to go into map number three. It's going to be Oxide. We'll see if Dream can start a comeback. Let's go. Game start. Afrika Freaks. Stats. Dream. Oxide. I haven't seen that many TVPs here yet. What is, what is your feeling about the map for this matchup? I think it's pretty good. I, yeah. I like this map in general mm -hmm. as, a, as a Protoss player. Uh, especially for Zerg, it feels pretty good with uh, how much force field you feel, force fielding you can do. Mm -hmm. Blink Colossus styles are really, really strong in this map. Um, 
versus Terran, it's pretty similar. I too, I, I think it, there's a, some decent drop potential into the main base with the little bit of dead space going into there, so that could be a little bit annoying. But otherwise, it feels it feels pretty good to control the map mm -hmm. for this uh, for this matchup specifically. I think what I've what I've found interesting. I don't know if this is just because I watch primarily trap games and he does the same stuff over and over again, but I see a lot of DT play on this map actually. Hmm. He he either proxies a dark shrine. Or you do this. There's this build where you can you cut probes and like one or two units out of the gateway just a little bit to get a faster robo, so you can do a fast uh, drop with the DTs. Mm -hmm. Stats doesn't want to hear me talk about this. He's <laughs> going for a proxy gateway. This is something he's also he also used versus Dream in one of the series recently on uh, Romantic side it was, and he mm -hmm. completely caught Dream off guard because you know Stats is not this person that usually goes for these plays, right? Stats is yeah. the defensive macro player. We always call him that. When you always say specifically, if he pulls these kinds of tricks into his uh, repertoire, yeah. he would be like the best Protoss in the world or something like that. Like, oh, you, you, yeah. always, you always go for this, and oh, it's actually a Stargate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but no, I do, I do like to see it. Uh, this is definitely something that Stats needs to needs to do to be the absolute best at this point. Uh, now, a Reaper's going to come down and probably find this pretty quickly. That's not going to really stop the Oracle from getting out, and we'll see how Stats deals with this type of situation. Okay, he sees exactly what it is, gives it one shot to say hello, and backs up. This is act. This is, this is Void Ray. You think it's going to be Void Ray? He's on one base. He didn't, he didn't expand. If this right, is, if see. this I mean, is, I want it to. If be it's Void an Ray. Oracle, a one, if it's a proxy Stargate Oracle into expand, that would be so it strange. It could in be my Oracle opinion. into Tempest. There it is. Oh, it is a Void Ray. Good call. This, yeah. Okay, interesting. I have not seen him do this recently, so this is pretty cool. No. Um, the fact that it was scouted so early and that it is Voidery is massive, actually, for for Dream. Mm. I'm, we, we really need to see if he understands that, because I think he thinks it's Oracle. He, yeah, I mean, when you first see that, that is the what you're going to end up thinking. But did he get, like, does he have anything out there to recheck the natural? No. no. So he doesn't know until he doesn't it have bunkers in. set up. He doesn't have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now funny. he's just putting it down. He now knows that it is Voidery, of course, and it is going to come in, get that one tap on the injured SCV. Nice. Marines will be able to push it away for now. Oh, or will it? <laughs> <laughs> Says, uh, oh, the adepts get into because oh, there's no god. wall off. He's, oh, he's in no. some serious trouble now. Oh my god, nothing even shoots up. He's got to wait for that cyclone. This is getting brutal. Can't finish the bunker. Oh my god. There's going to be a second Void Ray in a second here, too. He can't even mine at the Nat. I mean, you shouldn't really be mining at the Nat at this point. I feel like he needs to kind of bunker up at this point. Like, he's, he's got. Mm. No way to defend hey. us at this point. And look at this. Second Void Ray, Phoenix, and he is going a Nexus. So this isn't as all-in as a lot of these that we see. We don't see a bunch of proxy, you know, uh, batteries or anything like that for healing up. Kind of interesting, his take on this. This is actually something that Harstam used. Oh, nice <laughs> lift to barely keep that Void Ray alive, denying the Cyclone lock-on. And that is just that. Oh wow, that was, that was brutal. Uh, wow. Well, like we were talking about, if this was going to be a quick series, it was going to go 3-0 to stats. Yeah. I don't think that Dream played particularly badly, but, uh, well, Stats is just, I mean, he's the best Protoss out there, right? So what, what can you really do as Dream? Yeah. Uh, a tough a tough matchup for him here. Absolutely. Something that uh, that, that build that we were just watching there is pretty pretty cool because uh, Harstam did try something a little similar to this versus Maru, actually, in the in Asus mm. Rog. And, uh, yeah, you go for the Phoenix afterwards to deny those Cyclone liftoffs, uh, uh, lock-ons and stuff like that. You lift them up in the air. It's really good versus that. And then you can just expand behind it. You're not overly committing. You're not getting the extra pylons or batteries close to their natural, so you're not really worried about that. Those resources go to the natural, so you can then expand. And then it's a basically less committed, dedicated pressure. Yeah. Very. <laughs> I, I like the wording of that. You remind me of No Regret right yeah. now. Yep. Uh, all right. So that is our first match. Stats going to move forward. Up next, Innovation versus Armani after this quick commercial break.